it's all a data game. At the end of the day, whoever has the most data is going to win, right? So from a lead generation business, what I always say is you want to know how you make more than a company. You own the data that they need to grow. And that's what we do. We generate the leads for companies that need the data to grow. And we make a lot of money from it. Hey everyone, welcome to the Business Growth Pod. I'm your host, Alan Draper. Thank you so much for joining me. I know you're very busy starting your businesses and scaling them. So thank you so much. I'm gonna make sure that this is well worth your while and we have an incredible guest. So sales require leads, right? But generating leads is often the most difficult part and perhaps only slightly less difficult than monetizing those leads. Enter Phil Smith. Phil's an expert in B2B lead generation who has helped consult more than 10,000 people on the subject and counting. He started his first business in 1998, and since then he's made the Inc. 5,000 fastest growing companies, including as a one employee company working from home. Thanks so much for joining us today, Phil. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for having me. So... Why, what was it about lead gen that kind of like stoked your fire? How did you kind of get focused on that? Um, business owners know how important it is, but what specifically was it about lead gen? So it's funny. I, I sold one of my companies to an investment fund and I actually joined the investment fund to, to help them do investments and bring in more businesses and do a lot of marketing for them. But one of the companies that came in was a lead generation business and they're looking mm. for funding. And that's what I learned about the concept. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. You're saying generate all these leads, just sell them off and monetize them all these different ways. And it was just that. So it just struck me because it just, it fit my skill set. You know, I'm very analytical. I love numbers and I love like piecing things together like that. So fast forward to 2014, so that was 2011. So 2014, all of a sudden, I was in a position where I really didn't want to do what I was doing anymore. I was doing consulting at the time. I left the fund in 2012 because we sold the business that I sold them. We actually sold it again, sold it twice. Um, so 2014, I'm sitting there. It's like April. And I go, you know what? I'm going to figure out this lead gen thing. And mm -hmm. started April. I didn't figure it out till October. I ran my first Facebook ad at the time. And the reason why I loved it, again, fit my skill set. I was looking to make as much money as I could as a one employee company working from home. I've been working from home since 2006. My first business had 200 employees, so I didn't want to do that anymore. Uh, I sold that in 2005. But what happened was I just knew that this was a scalable and automated business model. And again, fit exactly what I did. So August, uh, I'm sorry, October, I ran my first ad. By the end of December going to January, I was doing 100,000 a month in revenue. And 2015 was our first full year. I did 1.57. So that's the reason why I loved it. Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's such an important part of, of any business. In order to, you know, bring people through the door, whether it's B2B, uh, B2C, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you think about it, that's exactly what Google is, right? Aren't they a lead gen company? All of them are lead gen companies at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean by all of them? So you take Amazon, mm -hmm. right? They have all these leads coming in. They have their customer base. And what they do, they create new service offerings. Like they just got into the medical industry. So they did that. And all of a sudden, they have like 30 million people signed up. They're like the largest telehealth company now. You know what I mean? It's Or whatever it is. I don't know all the details of it. But it's so easy for them now to just create something because they have the lead flow right in front of them. You know, Google, like you just said. You have all this traffic coming to them. So what they do, they build up more services. All right. They started with Gmail back in what, 2004. Then they obviously the ad platform. Then they started, they bought YouTube is another way to drive into leads, obviously for ad platform. And then now they got into the, the drive space, right? Everyone has their storage with them, right? They just keep adding more and more and more stuff just to supply all the leads that they have. You know, Apple's doing the same thing, you know? So it's all a data game. At the end of the day, whoever has the most data is going to win. 
right? So from a lead generation business, what I always say is you want to know how you make more than a company. You own the data that they need to grow. And that's what we do. We generate the leads for companies that need the data to grow. And we make a lot of money from it. It's it's interesting the differences between advertising or generating leads now versus like, you know, the yellow page days or billboard days. And obviously we're still seeing billboards out there. I think that's turned more into like a brand recognition game. Um, but um, let's talk about that a little bit. You, you mentioned data several times. It's very important that, um, you, you know, and, and I own a few different businesses and sometimes we get frustrated with clicks um, because we're like, wait, how are we paying all this money on clicks that don't actually, we use the word convert into leads. Um, and it's like, well, back in the day, how many people would like get the yellow pages or whatever that would never call you? They're not even, you know, I own a pest control company, for example. We pay a lot of money every year for leads. But now we have that data where it's like, okay, so we know all these things about an individual before they even call us, right? We know because we're advertising to certain demographics. Um, what's something that people, especially early entrepreneurs, feel struggle with when they're trying to wrap their head around, when they're starting their business, they're trying to figure out what their lead strategy is going to be? Well, that's, that's exactly what they struggle with, right? What is the lead strategy going to be? And then what they do is they may try something or listen to someone. And if it's the wrong advice, they just assume that, let's just say, for example, someone wants to try Facebook. So they probably hire someone. They might try it themselves first, but they don't even know what is a good lead cost, what is a bad lead cost, how do I do it, whatever. So you go hire someone. And that person may come in, and I've seen this plenty of times where they go, all right, I'm generating leads. And they're let's just say they're supposed to be $10. And then this person comes in and it's $30. They go, oh, wow, Facebook doesn't work because they just assume that this person knows what they're doing. So a couple of different things that go wrong. Number one, you choose the wrong ad platform for your company, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to jump on TikTok, but I got to be you, TikTok is horrible, horrible, horrible quality. So there's certain, certain things that can work in TikTok, like personal loans or clothing or certain things. But like business services, it's just practically impossible for TikTok, just as an example. So I could generate a lead for less than a dollar <laughs> on TikTok. Right. I literally won't make a profit, which is the craziest thing. And we've try, tried and tested it and it really doesn't work uh, for us. But let's just say Facebook. I've had people come to me, agencies, run ads and say, oh, yeah, your lead cost should be $30. I'm like, dude, I'm doing it for eight. Like, what are you talking about? And there's some big name people out there that are, you know, that I've worked with. And I'm like, wow, these guys are horrible. So working with the wrong people is not the number one thing because now it just it it free, you know makes people scared of doing it again or oh, how do I know and so not only does it screw up the marketing plan today but if it's a small business that doesn't have a lot of money to make mistakes it could put them out of business because now they're too scared to even try anybody else or try YouTube or Google or whatever so that's the biggest problem that I that I've seen over the years is people just working with the wrong people taking bad advice but what do you do? Like, you just don't know, right? So people don't know what they don't know. It's, it is what it is. And uh, a lot of mistakes are made with a company just getting going. And I feel bad for people when I do work with them and they've lost money or whatnot, but we do our best to obviously help out whoever we can. You know, this was such a pain point for a group of my businesses that three years ago, I started a digital marketing agency called Lizard SEM. And so we've been doing it for a while. I'm not involved in the day-to-day. -day. Um, it, it, but it's one thing that I've noticed is when, when entrepreneurs, when they're getting started, their budgets are so low. And with digital marketing, a lot of people think of it like it's going to be this efficiency light switch where it's like, I, I, turn, on, I turn on the ads, I create my budgets, and then all of a sudden, I'm going to get these really high quality leads. Um, there's a learning phase with Google where you, you know they're they're trying to sort some things out with your demographics, and that Google's trying to see if they can trust this company. Um, what what are the issues that you're seeing with people that are that are starting um, 
are, are you seeing that that a lot of times companies like that aren't in a position to put a budget that that is sufficient for what they're trying to achieve? Well, the bu- the budget really shouldn't matter at first because your your conversion ratios and everything is going to be the same, you know, as long as it's working. Whether you spend a hundred dollars a day or ten thousand dollars a day, it's still a conversion ratio is still a lead cost. Like uh, something with like. For Facebook, if you actually have a smaller budget on Facebook, you'll have a lower lead cost. When you actually spend more money, you actually pay more for your leads, which is the craziest thing in the world, but that's just the way Facebook works. On Google, it does take a while to actually figure it out, right? So if you, there's two, you know, it's two ways to go about it. Do I spend more money faster just to figure it out, but then I'm spending money if I don't make a profit, I'm screwed, or what do I do? So, you know, when, yeah, when you do have a bigger budget, as you know, it's easier to say, all right, just go spend the money so we can figure out faster because I'll make the profit later. I just I just need to make sure my lead cost is this and we're getting this conversion ratio, et cetera, et cetera. So, and YouTube is a totally different animal, you know, in terms of trying to figure out your demographic there. So <laughs> it's just, it, it is crazy on how every single platform is so different. You throw in LinkedIn, it's just a whole other world, right? So, you know, LinkedIn is something that we're actually... Uh, doing ourselves now. I haven't done a lot with LinkedIn myself over the years because it's not enough volume for us. You know, Facebook for us, tremendous volume. Google, way better quality, but you're just not going to get the volume. But for us, you know, YouTube actually works really well for a lot of things that we do. But again, mm-hmm. the company doesn't know, right? A company says, all right, I need to do this, but where do I put my money? What do I do? How do I do it? Who's going to do it for me? You know, and a lot of this stuff isn't as easy as it used to be because of all the changes that an algorithm changes and even just changes in the software themselves that these companies put out there, it is a lot harder these days to make, you know, advertising work for any company. It doesn't even matter what you do. And which is why companies go to lead generation businesses. You know, one of the biggest verticals that we're in is the insurance world, like health insurance and Medicare and whatever. Mm-hmm. Those big companies, they have so much money, it doesn't matter. But they basically just say, just flood us with leads because we're going to make a profit, no problem. And they'll overpay. Merchant cash advance for business loans. Those lenders make you know, 40% profit on a loan. It's crazy. Uh, 40% interest profit on a loan. So it, it's nuts in how much money they make so they can afford it. But they don't know how to generate leads. So that's why companies do say, I'll just buy leads. You know, for the local businesses, you know, you have what, 30 mile radius or whatever they're called, all the local businesses that can do it. You got cars.com that deals with dealerships, right? So you just say, I'll just buy the leads, just give them to me instead of me trying to go figure it out myself. But because some companies are large enough, let's just say for cars.com, they might be able to sell you a lead cheaper than you can actually generate it yourself, which is me in the business loan world. I sold leads cheaper than lenders can generate themselves because I was monetizing a lead five times. I was driving down my overall lead cost. So I can like, I'll give it to you for 30 bucks. It's cost them 70. They're like, I'll buy this. It's a no brainer. So you got to be strategic from our end and how to help people out. But a lot of companies, uh, especially the local businesses, I won't touch local. It just, it's not enough volume to, uh, to do it, uh, to make, for it to make sense. I only do nationwide services because it's way more volume, uh, to, for it to make sense to do it. Gotcha. So when you're, you know, advising a company, um, in terms of developing a budget or a cost per lead, um, what are the what are the pointers that you're giving them so that it works out economically for them? I know how we've done it, and we kind of back into it with yes. the margins that we want to reach, with what I know our closing rate's going to be. Is that is that kind of the system that you would recommend? Yeah, is, whenever I talk to a company on anything, you know as you know, it's about the entire funnel working together. So many companies come to you and say, I just want to do Facebook ads. All right, well, what happens when they reach your website? Where are you going to send them? Your homepage? Like, you know what I mean? So you, as you know, everything has to work together, even your drip campaigns, everything else, automate as much as possible. Of course, AI is all the rage now with everything, which, you know, 90% of people don't even make money in AI that are selling it. Uh, it's, it's been a little crazy lately. I literally just got an email before from a company saying, oh, we use AI to get leads from your site for the people who don't fill out your form, which you know has been around for years, has nothing to do with AI. Uh, but everybody just puts AI on everything now. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it's all about backing into it. It's all about you know understanding the entire funnel. So the first thing is make sure that their funnel is going to be able to handle what they're trying to achieve. F- figure out their profit margin, figure out what their lead costs could probably be. You know, and then just figure out everything across the board, 
yeah, you, ha- but yeah, like you said, you, I always work backwards from, all right, how much money are you going to make? What's your lifetime value? And then start working backwards of where you need to be. I'm actually building out a health insurance agency for uh, Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. So we're in the process of doing this right now from scratch. So we went and said, what's our overall lifetime value? It's probably going to be at $400 per person, roughly. It's probably going to cost us max $120 a person. Okay, so now we're down to two hundred eighty profit per person. Okay, now how much is it going to cost us to you know to make sure now we need to make sure we're getting to generate a lead for this price to hit that one hundred twenty, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then obviously scale it up, be able to lay out the money for everything because it takes six months to make a profit. So that's exactly what we did. We worked off how much money we're gonna make and then make sure everything fits. And then when you do it, you gotta make sure you hit those numbers on lead cost conversion ratio, et cetera, et cetera to meet to meet that number. So that's the best thing. The best thing I tell any company is become a marketing company, right? For yourself. Because that's the most important thing. Everybody that starts a business, the first thing they say is I need leads, I need customers. All right, well go become an expert in that and go put the effort in there because that's the game changer for you. If you're always relying on paying someone else to do it for you or buying leads, you're paying a premium and you're and you're paying a premium to people doing it for you. So bring it in house and just educate yourself or educate your people to make sure that you can just do everything. There's always great to use other people and consultants and agencies, whatever, if it makes sense to grow and scale, you know, do more than you can. But as a starting point, you have to, you have to today know as much as you can in house. You can't rely on other people. Yeah. That's an interesting point. Cause in a way you're talking yourself out of business, right? You're telling people yeah. don't hire me, like do learn to do it yourself. I, honestly, like, and I've done it both ways. Um, I've had companies where I did the marketing, where I did it in-house, where I've farmed it out. And now I own a digital marketing agency. Man, for some people, I, I do a lot of local services that a lot of home services is what we focus on. It's hard for them, man. These A, a lot of these folks are blue collar. They have technical skills with, you know, painting or landscaping or pool cleaning or pest control. It's like, dude, I don't know that they could run Google Analytics and good Google AdWords. You're 100 percent right. You know, when I first started doing consulting was back in 06, and I worked with a lot of local businesses here. Um, <laughs> I live in Long Island, and uh, <laughs> I just remember having that conversation. Let me just train you what to do, and they just looked at me like, like <laughs> you know, you're speaking Greek. You know what I mean? And it's just like, and you're 100 percent right. They don't want to do it, but you need. But instead of hiring me, hire someone in house to be that person and go pay the money to educate yeah. them, make sure that they stick around, of course. And now you have everything done. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying that's the smartest thing to do, but you're hundred percent right. See, I really don't work with that, uh, the local business that you're talking about anymore. You know, we're dealing with, you know, larger companies, you know, that are nationwide. So it's a little different, but yes, we do have consulting services. Those companies do come our way. Um, but I actually just, pass those over to somebody else to these days. I, the last thing I want to do is what you do in the agency side. So, (laughs) yeah. So, um, yeah. And you can pass them to me, by the way, if, if, if we're handing those, those leads out, (laughs) but I, I mean, you bring up a really good point because I think you have to know, you can't just like quote unquote, pawn it off on somebody. You have to have somebody within your company that Mm -hmm. there's where there's an alignment of, of interest. Um, that understands enough to manage it because I've seen it so many times. And this is one of the reasons why we started our own thing is because we, we didn't have control over our marketing and, and there are a lot of marketing companies out there that it's like easy, come easy, go. They're saying they're doing a lot of these things for you and they're really not, the phone's not ringing. How does somebody, what are the measurements so somebody owns a small business, they're wanting to make sure that their marketing company is doing a good job for them. What should they look for? <laughs> That's the hardest part because you know what it is? They usually go after, they usually go, they fall for the cheapest person, right? So I had right. one client, it was a local commercial cleaning company. And he started working with me. I was charging 2000 a month. He found somebody out of India or whatever. This is going back to like 2008. And uh, found somebody in India, a lot cheaper. It's probably less than $500 a month. I didn't hear from him for three months. He calls me back one day and he goes, yeah, so that didn't work out. Um, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that just because it's cheaper. India, that's the reason why. You know, it, the one, one thing that I look at 
for my stuff when I look to work with people. And you can't really tell a startup this or small company. The people that actually charge the most, to be honest, for me, seem to be the best, not the best, the better ones. Because yeah. like for me, I won't touch $100 a month, 200 I mean, I'm not doing anything for less than $3,000 a month today, right? I mean, and realistically, Kevin, I can't get him involved for less than 10000 a month. Right. So the people that have that stance are probably doing it for a reason. Also, I've learned that if people, you know, you want to go hire someone in house and, you know, I'll do my stuff for me. Usually, if they're really good at it, they're probably doing it for themselves. Right. And building their own business because mm-hmm. they can. Right. That's what happened with me. I just said, I'm just going to do this myself. Screw everybody else. So a couple of different ways you can look at it. But again, you can't go to somebody and say, well, just go pay the, the person that charges the most money. That's asinine. So, but the best thing that I could do, the best thing that you could do is research them. Look at, you know, if they put a lot of videos, content, whatever, you know, ask to speak to other people, you know, clients, testimonials, whatever. Uh, look at the history. How long have they been doing it? You know, um, do are they doing it for their own business? You know, that's one big thing. Yeah, and that's actually good. Like people say to me, Phil, you don't have a big following online. Like you don't generate a lot of comments and stuff. I'm like, that's true. I suck at organic marketing. Do not ask me to do organic marketing for you <laughs> because I'm just not good at it because I don't even do it for myself. But if you want me to generate leads for your business, well, I can show you that I've been doing that for a long period of time and absolutely crushing it, right? So look and see a company doing it for themselves because if they're not doing it for themselves, how are they going to do it for you? Right. So that's another thing that you can look at. That's funny that, you know, I, I love reading uh, my YouTube comments um, on my shorts more than any other platform. And like that last week or something, I was giving um, some, uh, you know, financial advice about, you know, saving money, investing money, whatever. And this guy's like, man, we're all, where are all your subs at? like subscribers, right? Like, and who are you to give uh, advice? And it's like, oh, uh, my net worth, first of all. Um, second of all, how many subscribers does Warren Buffett have? And I, I, I think I replied to him. And it's like, and one thing that really bothers me is this this idea that social credibility is the ultimate form of credibility. It, it drives me nuts, Phil. I can't freaking stand it. Like, how many followers you do? There are people that have millions of followers. First of all, a lot of them are bots or whatever. And I've been down that road, but there is this concept in digital marketing where it, back in the day, it was different. It was like, you know, word of mouth or whatever. Like, how do I trust this company? Um, and are you running into that? And how do people overcome th- this idea that, you know, like, Hey, what's your social media presence before I know if you're a good plumber? It's like, what the, what does that have to do with me being a good plumber? Right. right. So yeah, I'll give you two things. So somebody actually said it to me a few weeks ago and they commented, they said, Oh yeah, you're a big lead generator with one comment, whatever. So I replied to that. <laughs> I said, yeah, you're hundred percent right. I, I, this is a Facebook page. I don't even run ads to it. It's organic. There's a 30,000 followers, but the Facebook algorithm sucks anyway. It doesn't matter what I do. I got to pay for it. If I want to get any likes or comments, I'm not a celebrity, but that's not my goal. I'm not, I don't make yeah. money. This. I do everything's paid marketing for me. I don't do organic marketing. I used to do it 15 years ago, but it's horrible because you can't scale it. Right. So <clears throat> anyway, so that's one thing. The second thing, it's funny with Kevin Harrington, he was on Shark Tank for two seasons, right? Didn't, uh, hasn't been on since. But I'm trying like, to remember who that is. <clears throat> yeah. So Kevin was on the first two seasons. They call him the inventor of the infomercial. He's done six billion in sales. Um, as seen on TV. He used to own the as seen on TV brand. If you've mm-hmm. seen George Foreman on TV, he was behind it. The Gazelle mm-hmm. with Tony Little, the Ginsu knife back in the day. He is an absolute beast. And if you the, you drink Celsius, the drink Celsius? Yeah. Okay. So Kevin took that business from being worth a couple of cents per share. He did a deal with Flo Rida, got the Kardashians, uh, got the Hiltons and Kardashians involved, big influencers. Uh, basically seven or whatever years later, it's a $15 billion company. He made $200 million. 
um, he Pepsi did a deal with them. So they got all Pepsi distribution, which is why you see it now. Uh, mm-hmm. They're in, all over the place. And and the, the comments are, oh, he's not a shark. He was on it for uh, two seasons. Like, as if like you have to be on TV in order to make money. It's yeah. the most asinine thing in the world, right? I mean, I know plenty of people that are actually just you know at Kevin's level that you've never even heard of. Yeah. <laughs> right? As you know. So it is what it is. But yeah, we get that with him because we utilize a shark tank obviously from a marketing standpoint, because why not? Um, you know, mm-hmm. even Alex Rodriguez says he's on Shark Tank and he was on like one episode or two episodes. Right. Right? So it is what it is. But yeah, we get that too. But, it, you know, you just move on. Like, you know, the people that are going to comment like that are not the people I want to talk to anyway. You know, I, I it's not the per- that's not my target market, right? The people that have that mindset. You know, me personally, especially with our education business, our consulting business, our PR stuff that we do, whatever, if people have come to me with like this negative, and we get it all the time, just you're a scam, you're this, that, the other thing, and they or prove to me you're not a scam. <laughs> you, you should hear some of it, see, read some of the things I say to people. I'm not the PR, uh, uh, politically correct person. I am, uh, the customer is not always right in my, in my book. I, curse at people. I tell them some bad stuff that I won't say here. Uh, but I, I, I just don't care. You know, I just don't care. And I don't put up with it. You know, when people come at us with some re- like really aggressive stuff, I go right back at them. They usually freak out like, oh my God, they really talk to me like that? Yeah. Um, and they call me, not, not, I'm, I, I'm unprofessional. Like, number one, I don't care what you think, but you're the one that actually said it to me yeah. first. So it's just funny how people like to put the blame on others. But yeah, that, that whole world of people, they're not my target market anyway. And I just move on. So you mentioned, you know, how TikTok low low cost per lead or or impression or whatever. So it's not the best platform. How are what what's the direction that a company should take to determine I mean the idea is hey, I want to be in front of my target customers eyes, right? I want to be where they are. And the first step is okay, who's my target customer? Let's get really specific about who that is. What additional insights do you have? when they're deciding where to place their ads. <clears throat> so TikTok does work for some people, right? It doesn't work for a lot, but personal loans, as an example, it actually works really well because you have mm-hmm. such a low lead cost and everybody in this country, pretty much a lot of people broke, right? There's more broke people than non-broke people and they're pretty much on TikTok. So that actually works really, really well. <clears throat> then if you take like, Jewelry, clothes, fashion, that actually works really well. But yeah, t- t- it it depends on the company, right? So it also depends not only on what they're selling, what they're doing, but what the profit margin is. If you can handle like the lower quality lead of Facebook just because you're going to make a lot of money on the leads or, or you know, your lifetime value of a client, great. You know, that, that could work. But so let's just take someone recently. Um... God, we just deal with so many people. Um, like product based products actually work really well on Facebook, especially anything mm-hmm. with a demonstration, right? Anything that can be visual that actually works really, really well. Hmm. So we've had some people because because of Kevin. Kevin's a product guy, right? So really just deals with products, and so a lot of products come our way because of that. So people have like these weird frisbees and these like gimmicky type things. But as mm-hmm. long as it can be demonstrated, we had actually a lady that did. Um, strain hair and it like it was like a vacuum right mm-hmm. so you it sucks in your hair so take a woman with long hair and you suck in your hair and instead of them doing like their flat irons or whatever and all that stuff to straighten their hair it, it's a very demonstrable product right so it's very yeah. simple to sell on facebook because everyone can see it you can obviously mm-hmm. target the right demographic so that type of stuff really works well of course youtube too but you know facebook you're just going to get more volume out of it <clears throat> so something like that works really well but yeah, it really just depends on what it is. Google, I mean, for us, for, I have an education side where Google works great because if someone's searching for this specific keyword, then yeah, sure, put my put my keyword, you know, put my stuff in front of them, great. But the volume's exactly. not there, right? It is what it is, right? So it's actually the lowest volume that we have, but it's the highest profit margin. I wish I can ten x that. That'd be great, but it just doesn't work. YouTube is number two. It does good enough. It gets more volume, 
but it's better than Facebook, but not as good as Google, right? So it, it, yeah, it just depends on the company and what exactly they're doing. If you're looking to be local and you're looking to target like a local area, then yeah, Facebook's going to probably work a little better for you because you can literally drill, drill down. We did a launch event for our, uh, one of our companies earlier this year. So it was just in a Long Island and we just did basically like a 20 mile radius and whatever. And we just pounded away and we asked every, we did some radio, we did some mailers, we did multiple things, but we asked everybody there, like, how did you hear about us? And every like 98% was social media, even though I ran commercials for like a week straight leading up to it. We did like 10,000 mailers, but everybody just remembered whether or not it was radio or whatever. Everybody just remembered the social media. You know, so it's, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing social media. So it was pretty much majority of social media. And we just hyper focused, hyper targeted with business owners and a 20 mile radius and just pounded. And we did a, a reach campaign, not a, 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 a lead campaign. So we just wanted to reach as many people as possible. Gotcha. Yeah. So as we're wrapping up here, Phil, uh, what is if you could change the average business owner's perspective about lead gen, what would be the one thing that you would want them to know or that you would want them to think differently than is normally the case? All right. So the, what, the one thing I, I, would, I call my secret sauce is this. So I actually spoke at a, a war room mastermind event. It's about 250 people. Everybody had to generate at least seven figures to be there. So you're talking to a decent crowd. And I talked about monetizing your leads multiple times or even monetizing your mm. customer base multiple times, which is what Amazon and Apple and Google and Microsoft do, right? So sure. I did that. I had about 20 people come up to me over two days of that event and want to ask me questions. And it was amazing the the response I got. So when I first did that, I realized like, wow, this is actually, I, I figured that these people were doing it, right? Or it was already known. And what happened was, there's two people that came up to me even years later, one person earlier this year uh, and one person last year. And they just said to me, hey, man, I just want to let you know, remember when you spoke at War Room and you told this, this guy was in the merch, is in the merchant processing industry. He generates a lot of business owner leads, of course, and he started monetizing them other ways and put out email campaigns over like a six month period and have all these different things. He added seven figures to his business for, you know, per year. And the other guy, same thing. You know, he, the other guy is actually in the lead generation business and he was generating mm -hmm. a lead and monetizing it once. I'm like, well, why don't you do this, this, and this? A year later, I see him and he goes, dude, you added seven figures to my business. So for a business owner, if you have the ability to monetize your leads or your customer base multiple times, don't think you're like being, you know, it, don't think it's a bad thing. A lot of people think it's a negative. It's positive. Like give them something that they want. I'm not saying sell them some weird thing that doesn't make sense, but if mm -hmm. you're, if you're doing construction or like you you do home alarms, well, and you're in someone's house, you can probably generate that lead for the roof guy or the AC guy or whoever, at least generate the lead and make a deal with somebody, which obviously happens all the time. People give each other leads, whatever, but you can turn it into a, a revenue stream for your business. doesn't matter what you do. Even restaurants could technically do it if they wanted to. You know, they have everybody coming in. You know, you just got to be do it the right way. I'm not saying be spammy about it. But there's a lot of different ways to monetize your data, your leads, your customer base multiple times. But I have to tell you, that's the number one thing that's made the people, people I know the most money that's listened to me. Love it. Phil, where can people reach out to you if they have questions, they want to learn more about what you guys do? Yeah, my main website is just my name, Philip with one L, Philip F. Smith. So F is in Frank. So philipfsmith.com. That's it. Love it. Thanks for joining us. Wish you nothing but success, my man. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, please leave us a rating. And for daily inspiration and business tips, follow Alan on Instagram. Until next time, remember, we build the future one entrepreneur at a time.